there, everybody. Live on the Yankee Baseball Network, WPIX Sports presents the 1991 New York Yankees. From Yankee Stadium in the Bronx, WPIX Sports presents Yankee Baseball. Tonight, the Yankees host the Chicago White Sox. Starting pitchers are Wilson Alvarez for the White Sox and for the Yankees, Pasquale Perez. Hi, everybody. Welcome to New York Yankee Baseball. Phil Rizzuto along with Tom Seaver and Bobby Mercer. Hey, Mercer, will you hold this uh, mic for just a minute? Yes, excuse me. Seaver's hair is a little too long tonight. Uh-huh. I'm just going to give him a little trim. <laughs> Okay, and by the, the way, Italian barber comes out. Oh, yes, it is. Perry Como and me, yes. But, you know, we've got a little hairy situation going on here in the Bronx. What do you think of it? And, and to wrap it up in the words of a pretty good writer, much ado about nothing, Scooter. I mean, this is a big flap over something that should have never happened. I much agree. Much ado about nothing. Absolutely. And Mr. Mercer? Well, you know, I had a chance to talk to Don Mattingly before today's ball game. Let's just go right down on the field and find out, find out what Don Mattingly had to say about the issue and have they buried the hatchet yet. Okay. Uh, I feel like it has been. We've talked with uh, the Yankee people up in the office, Mr. Kleinman, and, uh, and met with Stick and Stunt and, uh, and talked some things out. And so uh, um, we pretty much decided that we'll that we all made some mistakes on it and uh, and that from now on we try to handle it in-house which is probably the best way are we going to get a haircut uh there's really no pressure to get one i don't think at this point but uh like i told him before i was planning on getting one in a couple of days anyway uh, you know, about three or four days ago i told uh steve donnie i said i need a trim you know i need a haircut and uh and then you know then when i got cornered going back to the other situation when I got cornered and, and forced to, you know, within a 45-minute period to uh, just fought back. And so I'll, I'll take care of it. Let me ask you one other question. Did Don Mattingly really ask to be traded for the Yankees? Well, I talked about, uh, I, I went and talked to, to Stick, I guess, in, in a sense, yes, but I talked about not really fitting in the organization anymore. I didn't feel like I was uh, uh, fitting in the way that you know, I would like to. And uh, at that point, we agreed to wait to the end of the year to talk about it again. And, and that's pretty much where it's at. Uh, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, I just want to really come to the park, play baseball, play it hard, play it the way it's supposed to be played, and, and go home and not really have to worry about any other little things going on. And I guess this hair is a little kind of example of what I'm talking about. Well, Mattingly, explain. What do you think, Robert? Well, All right, of course, I fell asleep in the barber's chair today, but we're going to get some fan reaction from uh, what the people in the stands have to say about the hair issue. <laughs> you look cute, you know? Yes. <laughs> you look like Don Mattingly is the captain of this team, and you don't go public on the captain of the team. Thank you. Thurman Munson had long hair. Lou Pinella had long hair. Even G. Michael in 73 was told by George to cut his, cut his hair. Absolutely. Rules are meant to be followed. For $2 million, he should do that, yes. Cut my hair. Knows about the Don Mattingly issue. Pasquale Perez is supposedly with some long hair, and he did have a little bit of a trim for start since being placed on the disabled list. Back on uh, May the 14th, 1991, when he came off the disabled list this year for the first time, with six innings and won the ball game, and then it was all downhill after that. He's trying it once again. Swing and a miss, strike three by Perez. So range is down, and there's one out. We'll make note that Pasquale Perez is also on a pitch count tonight, being the first time coming back off the DL. He had a couple of starts for Albany, the double-A club for the New York Yankees, in which he went or cut for you. That's a shave. I would mind somebody cutting a little bit of gray hair off of me. Looks like Scooter got a hold of that guy. Thomas batting 317. That pitch is up high. A lot of ways, Bobby. They can beat you with speed, power, pretty good numbers, obviously, for Frank Thomas. And you look at this overall ball club of this White Sox, and you say, boy, what kind of ball club are they going to be next year and the year after that? Automatically, double play. So if you're going to walk a pair, you might as well get the next batter to bounce into the double play. And that's the spark from Pascal Perez. No score. As the Chicago White Sox are down here at the top of the first. Wilson Alvarez, a no-hitter his last time out. 
<laughs> you die. Oh, it's one of the great shots I've ever seen. A uh, youngster coming up, pitching a no-hitter in his first start. And all of a sudden, be mod He said, what? Almost as, as if it was confusion. And what a gem it was, too. We'll take a quick look at the American Airlines starting lineup for the Yankees. Leading it off and playing center field, Bernie Williams. Steve Sachs in second and plays second. Don Mattingly at first. Roberto Kelly. Hitting fourth, Mel Hall hitting fifth in right field. Hensley Mullins hitting sixth. Alvaro Espinosa, the shortstop, hitting seventh. Bob Guerin doing the catching. And Pat Kelly at third, hitting ninth. And Wilson Alvarez, you look at his numbers, there's a one in the first row, and then it's all zeros after that. <laughs> no batting. See, how many batters did he walk in that ball game? He baseball for the Chicago White Sox. Only his second major league start. Check that 89. That trade sending Harold Baines and Fred Manrique to the ring. That's to Lionel Alvarez in his first major league start for the Texas Rangers. He didn't retire a batter. He never got out of the first inning as he walked Bernie Williams. So the Yankees have their leadoff man on here in the bottom of the first inning. No score. Hard, but it was an out of ball and there's two outs here in the bottom of the first well you can hear the crowd reaction for Don Mattingly as he steps to the plate yesterday Mattingly was good and that's the back page of one of the papers to <laughs> I don't know how they did that but Mattingly is certainly a big favorite here at Yankee Stadium and they're glad he's back in the lineup. There's so many. Imagine what the starting pitcher on the day that Matt only can't play, what he feels like, what Scotty Sanderson must have felt when the best hitter in your ball club isn't in the lineup. And as far as the Chicago White Sox are concerned, today's ball game, and he didn't do it, so the skipper put him on the bench. Oh, c'est bien placé. En jeu. De l'anneau qu'on tourne le premier. Se rend au deuxième. Voyons de quelle façon ce jeu par Hardler, c'est bien joué. On limite les dégâts à un double. C'est tombé sur la ligne ou presque. You get here, champ. All right. Why was this suddenly discovered mid-August? I don't know. My hair's been like this all year. That's what I um, So, I don't know. It's just their opinion. That's what they wanted. If they asked you to cut no. your hair. <laughs> and out. Period. Done. <laughs> well, some reactions from the Yankee ball players. Mel Carlton Fisk, he's gonna he's gonna play it to the okay. the veteran Carlton Fisk, one of the over the forty guys in baseball. Look at him; they're gonna have a little fun with this. <laughs> Carlton did not even make an attempt to get out of the way of that slow breaking ball, and if you don't make an attempt to get out of it in the umpire's opinion he will not let you go to first base and Carlton knows that look at the grid yeah uh, so, does, so does toe board so of course they do and punch made no attempt to get <laughs> out of the way punch isn't gonna move he says no I'm down here it's a long 90 feet I ain't walking back <laughs> now they're having a little fun with each other good job of acting by Carlton Fisk yeah. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> He's saying now, I couldn't move. I couldn't get out of the way of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tell that to somebody uh, else, Kaiser says. Uh, yeah, you make up your mind. Uh, the hitter has to make an attempt to get out of the way. Oh, <laughs> oh no, 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 no. I'm not buying. Look at the reaction of Ken Kaiser immediately. He said, oh. no, you're right here. You better watch that. So, for you uh, people listening in, you fans, Gene Michael will come into the booth here in the bottom of the second inning, and we'll talk to him about some of these issues. Don Mattingly, of course. Maybe the outfield issue with Bernie Williams. Still in center field. His reaction was that he, he, had, he had said no, that he wouldn't get a haircut, so I, I immediately reacted wrongly. Uh, he wouldn't do it, but I, I didn't understand that he wouldn't do it then. He was sort of backed into a corner on the thing, and uh, my my mistake was that in the severity of the punishment and uh, taking it on stuff that he shouldn't play him, 
That's wrong. I made a mistake there. Uh, uh, I think it should have been handled before. I think it was uh, two weeks previous uh, that he was asked to get a haircut. And I think that uh, it should have been handled with a lid in-house rather than uh, uh, exposing it. And uh, at all, and, and uh, Stump told him he had to get his haircut before the game, and that wasn't the way we meant that at all. Oh, and Wanda Mal Hall. And you know what they said? Well, they told him that. <laughs> I think they told him that he didn't have to get a cut. But what rule, I, as I know it, has been in, in effect since 1973. It was in there, actually. Yeah, right. That's now, right. that was before. That was after CBA. <laughs> this, this one. <laughs> that is not. That is not. <laughs> this was during the winter. <laughs> now that's 1974. During the winter. During the winter. Okay. So. But let me ask you about the rule, which has been in effect for a long, long time, along with coats and ties and socks and all. It had been a private thing. He came in about two months ago before we started playing well, and he didn't like the way he fit in. He thought he wasn't necessarily needed here or didn't fit in well. And I said, Donnie, we're not going to trade you. I said, we want you. We want you here. We need you. Uh, we think you can bounce back and uh, you know, put some numbers. Danny Pasqua puts two more on the board. They're in the top of the third. They now lead it four to nothing. And Pasqua with his 13th home run and his 47th and 48th RBI. First pitch from Pasquale Perez. And one of those no doubts about it. We talked about Pasquale and the lack of a fastball, and that looked like a little sinker away. He stayed in the middle of the plate. Does not look like Pasquale. <laughs> They're going to have a lot of fun with this. As Kelly slid outside and get back in time, Fist thought he had him. Kelly made a heck of a slide off to the right side and slid away from Carlton Fisk, and by the time he flipped it back to Cora, it was not in time. Well, the first hit in the ball game for the Yankees, and there goes the no-hitter. Pudge, an excellent try. Kelly, a great slide, and he kept his hand inside that running lane down there. Oh, that's a good job by Pat Kelly right there. And Pudge just could not, actually did not react until he saw the safe call by Jim Joyce at first. And a good call, right? That's a good umpire right there. A lot of times your umpires do not get enough credit. But Joyce Wright. Kelly will come on to score. Sox will go into second. And the Yankees have put one on the board. And it's a 4-1 to one ball game now in favor of the White Sox. Steve Sachs, a high fastball hitter. And talk about difference in ballparks. Steve Sachs, for many years, a Dodger. Short stroke. This is a lock on a home run in Dodger Stadium. And in this ballpark, as far as it is to left center field, he gets a double out of it. The Yankees, of course, get a run. You know, you wonder Steve Sachs down there at second base talking to Jim McKeon saying, you know, that's a home run in Dodger Stadium. And I mean, a line drive automatic home run in Dodger Stadium. But here at Yankee Stadium, just a double. Nice hustling Pat play Kelly. by uh, Pat Kelly. Yanks get on the board. Sammy Ellis went out to the mound to talk to young Wilson Alvarez. And boy, you're talking about somebody that will hand you with kid gloves, and that's exactly what those White Sox are trying to do with this young man that's pitching for them. Don Mattingly will step in now. Donnie struck out his only trip. Month of August. Donnie has hit over 300 since the All-Star break. Alvarez trying. Breaking ball swung on, and there is Ozzie again, and they throw out Mattingly. What a draft play. choice for the Knicks in 67. Walt Frazier. Most shutouts, New York Yankees. Whitey Ford. How far down the left field line in Wrigley Field? 350 feet. Hmm. 355. Get out of here. 
the bigger, bolder sports section of the Times. And there he goes. He leaves. He makes the cast. See Tuesday night doubleheaders, Wednesday night excitement, Friday night twin bills, and exclusive Sunday night action. The AL West race is tight as Kirby Puckett sparks the surprising twins. Jose Canseco hopes to power the athletics toward another division title. The pennant chase heats up live on ESPN Sunday Night Baseball. But that one, I don't know. No doubt he was crossed up on this pitch right here. Watch how he reacts to it. Boom. And that's just a Ooh. fastball that uh, broke back over the plate. Yeah. And he gets a strike call out of it. It's going to be a pass ball by Bobby Guerin. But more importantly, Johnson moves to second with nobody out. So he doesn't have to bunny. <laughs> Service de Jean Lowe nous autres aussi on déteste ça. Alors on fait le maximum. Now the first Yankee Clipper was Joe DiMaggio. Now the second one is Carl Taylor. And I understand he charges a lot of money for his haircut. I don't believe, I think he had to pay Bernie Williams for his if he gave him. There's Joe Angel. Well, he's he doesn't little... need a haircut. No, he needs a little hair. Yeah. That's what. <laughs> Drive to right center and going back. Williams makes the catch and tagging up and going to third base is Johnson. Oh, little Joey Cora got good wood on that one. Back to the warning track. It's a three and a half. Mets trail two to nothing. In the field. Roberto Kelly, who has been hitting the ball hard but not getting any bases to show for it. That looked like a hanging curve, Bobby, up high, and he jumped on it. And the Yankees trail by only two now, four to two the score. Something that you really like the right-handed hitters to do here at Yankee Stadium, and it's a pretty sight, when they take the ball to the opposite field. Yep. And it just goes to show you that you don't have to pull every pitch to hit it out of the ballpark. Look at that beautiful swing right there. And it's got to be a good mechanical swing in order to hit the pitch that he hit out of the ballpark. And, and right there is that wind tunnel like that. The flip to first and they just get him. Hensley 0 for 1. One. Where they hit the baseball. Oh, yeah. And the only guy that I really know, so even if there was a wind tunnel, there's a nice piece of hitting right there by Mew. And you can see the right handers now, they're not trying to pull the ball off of Alvarez. They're going to the opposite field. And they need to get some more production out of Bam Bam Mew yes, if they're sir. going to do some damage against the breaking ball that uh, is up and out over the plate. And that's a good Sox player to lead the American League in batting average in a season. That certainly is. <laughs> Bobby Guerin. That's a scouting report, Scooter. We talked about Johnson being an outstanding outfielder with speed, but he doesn't have an arm out All there. He's right. got everything but the arm. And they are really uh, babying this Wilson Alvarez tonight. Sammy Ellis back out on the mound, but there goes another right-handed hitter up the middle towards the opposite side. Oh, yes. Beautiful. And you can see that Mullins, he never even thought about stopping. And, Cor and uh, games right now over the Oakland A's, but the White Sox are closing fast. Mike Moore here for the A's in the second. They've lost four in a row. Shane Mack just inside the line. Brian Harper chugging around and comes in to score all the way from first. One nothing is the score. Let's get back to Gary and Ray. And yet another big series in the West. These two teams, the Mets and the Bucks, have gone at it. For a long time, but over the last... Your choice of Bert Blylevin, Gaylord Perry, and Don Sutton. You have made your choice. For the good answer, you should say Bert Blylevin. He is the fourth member of this quatuor of 3,500 retraits au baton. He has joined this club exclusive in 1989, when he wore the uniform of the Angels of California. Bert Blylevin, 22 seasons, more than 3,500 retraits au baton.
for a start ball. Oh, man. That's a lot of muscle right there. See, he's been really working out faithfully, you know, Bobby? Doing all these calisthenics. There's Herm Schneider, the yeah. ex-Yankee uh, trainer, looking on, making sure everything is all right, and Bo going through that strenuous workout every day. A regime that he has to go through in order to build that muscle tone back up. scouting you like to look at a guy's bat and when you look at Bernie Williams's bat especially from either side whether yeah. it's the right side or left side the ball jumps off of his back really it's just like having a uh, and you know you talk about a pitcher that throws a heavy ball you don't yeah. really know how to explain it but you know when the ball meets the bat of Bernie Williams it's going to go it's someplace jump. we'll get an argument that they may have the better bullpen in all of baseball and a lot of yes. flexibility down there. That's especially the way Torborg uses it. Of course, Bobby Thickpin, the closer in that, yeah. that pin, but Thickpin and Pin, that, <laughs> that sounds like it goes together. Very unusual for Gian. Oh, they could give uh, Sachs a hit on that. It'll be an error on Gian. Well, don't say that too, uh, too quick because they gave... They gave, uh, I think it was Joey Cora base hit when Don Mattingly bobbled the ball at first base. Well, I mean, he's going to get a hit and an error. Oh, okay. An error on the wild throw, okay. but a base hit. The error is up there. Let's see. With a heads-up play, you can see when he sees that the ball gets by Carlton Fisk at first base, he will come on to score. 4-3 ball game now, and here's Mattingly. Matt Dunn struck out and bounced to short. So the hubbub uh, has subsided here. And things back to normal. All Mattingly has to do is get a hit, and this place will explode. And he does get a base hit. And Sachs will go to third. The throw. And he's safe. I Ooh. tell you that. If he had stayed back, I think they'd have had him, Bobby. He went way up Ventura to get that throw. And he had to reach back to try and make the tag. But I tell you, that was some throw by Pasqua. And Pasqua 
And showed a good arm when he was with the Yankees, and he certainly shows one here. Ooh, very boy. close at third base, and the one hopper, you saw Ventura, he came up. If he'd have stayed back like Scooter oh. said, you could see Sachs took one look at Pasqua, and he was on his way to third, but watch where Ventura is, and if he's back to put they the got tag him on Sachs, yes. they got him. Right. Why he was up the line, I don't know, because the ball would have come back to him. So Alvarez being greeted by three base hits in this inning, the four to three ball game, but Tolborg early has uh, taken Alvarez out of the ball game. So a difference in two starts for yep. Wilson Alvarez. That's one at a pitch in. Well, the pitching change has been made, and it will be right-hander Don Paul coming to face uh, Roberto Kelly. Has registered a 0.93 earned run over his last six appearances. Hi, mm. right, Roberto, big man now with one out, the potential tying run at third, and uh oh, that is not too deep, but he's got to try it. Sacks is fast, and a throw to the plate. Holy cow! He's out. Yep. Now for Yankee baseball. At any moment, a great moment. Good evening from the WROI traffic counter. Believe it or not, everything, everywhere is clear. Back with more right after this. Right now, during Roy Rogers. And a big throw right here from right field. At one point, I'm not sure. It looked like Danny really didn't have the, the good balance to yeah. throw the ball. Chicago topped the Phillies 9-1. St. Louis began the night six back of the Pirates in the East. Gerald Perry with an RBI single. The Cards lead Montreal. Speaking of the East leading Pirates, Jose Lean and Barry Bonds with RBI singles. As Pittsburgh leads New York, the Mets are ten and a half games back. West leading L.A. plays host to Houston. The Dodgers lead Atlanta by a game and a half. Atlanta's at San Diego. And the Giants are six back. The Reds eight and a half off the pace. American League in the first of two in Cleveland. The Rangers snapped a five-game losing streak by taking game one by a 5-3 score. Juan Gonzalez hit his 22nd. And the teams are scoreless in game two. Holy cow. Oh, <laughs> you kind of stunned me there for a moment. Yes, I stunned myself. I can't. <laughs> High side, two balls. I hope side. she's watching tonight. Oh, boy. Get, oh, no, get no. <laughs> I, I didn't mean it that way. She knows that. By Kelly. Oh, I hope he's not hurt. He landed hard. Holy cow. The umpire running out make sure he's got the ball. What a catch by Roberto Kelly. Holy cow. We got to see that one again. I mean, he hit hard when he landed. Oh, you know, he, he knew he had a dive for that, Bobby. Oh, you looked watch like it. Looked like a gapper all the way. And yep. watch Kelly right there. And oh. Bernie Williams just on the inside or outside. Great play by Roberto. Saves a run for the Yankees. And the controversy about Kelly playing in left field. He says, I don't like playing left field. But Stump Merrill says, our ball club is better with Kelly in left field and Williams in center. And you can certainly prove it by that catch right there. That's right. The score now at the end of five and a half. White Sox four and the Yankees three. Kelly, after that uh, outstanding catch in the outfield, take a look at it one more time as he makes a running, diving catch, and his oh. face, look how his head hit the turf. Yes, it it's a good thing it's natural turf because yeah. that artificial oh. surface, boy, would, will do some would damage have on his, his face. nose, yep. absolutely. Berto just coming off the DL. Look at him playing shortstop. I think it's more psychological than anything else, yes. Peter. Yeah, it always to, bothers the hitter. Try to get a left-handed hitter that's got power. He played him just like this, but he still pulled everything. Out. Favorite shot from up here. Look at that, the defense. Three men between first and second. Oh, out of chair. He's taking quite a bit off now to Hall, making him supply his own power. And break a leg up there, jumping the seats. They want the kids to get it. <laughs> Almost all the fun is being at the ball game and chasing down a souvenir. Yep. After, this is not an afternoon, but on a summer afternoon, it's awful nice, too. 
This is a summer night. Summer evening at night. Oh, you're right. It's night. My fly just got under it. He got goo. And one man out. Boy, he throws everything. Uh, There's a shared from the shared concert. From concert. I think it's to the homeless of New York or for every base hit or every home run or whatever. Uh-huh. Got him again. My Nissan. In 1961, Maris hits two, two-run homers as the Yankees get back in the winning column with a 5-4 victory over the White Sox at the stadium. It's the sixth straight game in which Maris has hit a homer. Maris now has 48 after hitting the two of Billy Pierce of the White Sox in the first and in the fourth. This is Babe Ruth that attends the game for Babe Ruth Day at the stadium, marking the 13th anniversary of Ruth's death. That was August 16th. And by the way, this will be a regular feature on both MSG and WPIX. McReynolds over. Makes the play in this inning. Six. Mets eight. Hit her with your best line. Uh, I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> The drinks are on you. Mind your manners. And always bring protection. I think she wants to kill us. Mystery date. What with MSG? Now playing. Rated PG-13. Powers to get him back. Dans la droite en ligne. Frappé avec un bel élan, bien synchronisé, frappé avec beaucoup de force. Mais c'est une et une maintenant. You be diving out there yourself. Well, <laughs> if it gets closer, I might. But they have a promotion here that um, a fast food outlet in the Pittsburgh area gives out free milkshakes when the if you bring your ticket stub in. Cushion. Moi, j'ai plus confiance en Aurora. C'est le meilleur bras des trois, je pense. Oui. Please. Et nobody can turn that double play like that. 3-6-3. And a little Golden Glover gets Tim Leary out of the jam after six and a half here at the stadium. The Sox up by one. Four to three over the Yankees. The Yanks and the White Sox on MSG. And Sunday, an afternoon game here at the stadium. And that game also on MSG uh, against the White Sox, a 1.30 start. And then Monday night, uh, Scooter and Bobby Mercer and I will be right back here as the Yankees take on the Kansas City Royals here on Channel 11. That'll be an 8.30 start Eastern time. The only game that we'll be doing from Kansas City. Matt Noakes, pinch hits. Or Bob Guerin here in his left hand. And the brace that he has to help that sprained thumb. He sprained that thumb. He has the kind of brace that Johnny Bench used to wear when he would catch every time, especially against a staff of sinker ball. Didn't it look like he went straight yes, in the middle did. of that? Yes. Look at that. Oh, they missed the ball. Holy the cow. Fielder just stopped dead. And then Guillen all of a sudden stopped. What a way to get a pinch hit single, huh? But I want to tell you, if he was hustling, he's down at second base. So a break for the a break for the Yankees. And easy pop-up off the bat of Matt Noakes. They must have been taking their lessons from Gene Michael because he was earlier talking Boy. about miscommunication, yeah. wasn't he? he That's he exactly was. what happened there. It's the incomparable Victor Borga in his best love, most heartwarming comedy performance of all time. <laughs> the best of Victor Borga on VHS is only $19.95 plus $3.95 postage and handling. To order your personal copy, you must act now. <laughs> oh, no, we no, commercial. no, don't tell him. 
I wouldn't whip a dog as hard as you're whipping me up here tonight. I'll tell you that. A lot of people say lay off Siva. They, I they would agree with them off. entirely and wholeheartedly <laughs> and justifiably. Melito Perez, the third pitcher used by the White Sox, with Matt Noakes on first with a gift single. A one-run ball game here in the bottom of seventh. Nobody out. And Pita bounced off the mound. They'd have had him at second yes, base. Yes, sir. If he'd have really been aggressive, they'd have gotten Noakes at second. But a good job by Pat Kelly. And the Yanks have the tying run at second base with one out. He looked for Bunt. And it's one of the situations in baseball that too many managers and too many pitchers give away. They simply throw a fastball and let the bunt be executed and instead of trying to pitch to defend the bunt, right. which you can do, and you yeah. know it too. Oh, yeah. high Absolutely and tight. high and tight. Yeah. The slider Going away. That's moving right. the ball yeah. up the bat, trying to get it on the top part of the bat. Bring out Bernie Williams, one for two with a walk. He doubled in the fifth and doubles. Oh, look. And or what kind of pitch Perez throws. Ooh. Off speed pitch he did. And sacks, and rightfully so, yeah. looking for the fastball. He should look for the fastball. You look for your strength until you have to defend the plate. Don Mattingly on the on-deck circle, and two to two, two outs, two and two, excuse me, to sacks. A scribbler, that's going to be a tough play. Got him. Oh, boy. Good play by Perez. A slide by Sacks, a good play by Perez. And he works out of a jam. We're through seven here at the stadium. That's uh, the White Sox four. That famous TV commercial. I've fallen and I can't get up. So but it's not so funny right so there. You are now well. La batte du match est Ozzy Smith. Et chez les Expos, le joueur la batte du match est Mel Rojas. Un don traversé par les joueurs la batte. The runner is dead. No matter what he does, the runner is dead. If the runner at home does not go, and an easy double play. Oh man! If you trap that ball, but. Larry gets the one out. Never even gave it a thought. Yeah, the trap play, to understand this, the ball, you act like you're going to catch it and let it bounce. That's right. And catch it on the first hop. You cannot let it hit your glove and hit the ground. But you fake a catch and then pick it up and throw behind the lead runner is the correct way to make the play. That's right. And get the other runner in a rundown. We used to practice that. Didn't sure, you, you got to practice. Because the runner at first base cannot go. No, he's, he's frozen. Frozen because of the pop-up. Oh, that's one. We were talking about defending the bunt play, Scooter. Yep, that's another way, yeah. And I got it. In my career, I got it several times, and especially in first and second situations. Oh, nobody out. Oh, you know, and that ball pops up, and you can get a double play. You're talking about killing a rally. Ooh, he, that's a dandy. strikes to Ron Karkovice. Karko has sacrificed twice and struck out. And it's Malik. Oh, boy, oh, alley job. Mattingly's going to go all the way to third. Yanks first and third, nobody out. Oh, boy. I said Roberto has hit the ball on the nose in the last well, the, all the games he has started since coming back off the disabled. He hasn't got that many base hits, but he's hit it hard. Matting Lee's at third. Watch this. Oh, boy. Right on it. Oh, he had the same kind of approach he had when he hit the home run. Right. Shooter, and if he thinks right center, he's in good shape. Boy, the head of that bat was right out on that ball. Mm. Uh, Mel Hall, the scheduled hitter, so a pitching change again by the White Sox, and we'll take time out. Along the Yankee Baseball Network, for the on the mound and pitching well, and a great play as well. The comebacker by Phil Plantier lines into the double play as he gets balls in the sixth. Still a scoreless game. Roger Clements facing Danny Tartable. 
Carnival lifts at the field plants here. The sacrifice fly as Sean Berry tags up from third and comes in to score. One nothing would be the lead for the Royals. Red Sox tied it on the Mo Vaughn sacrifice fly, and then Phil Plantier hits the home run as Boston takes a 3-1 to one lead in the eighth inning. Keep this in mind. The Red Sox at one point were 11 games behind the Toronto Blue Jays. Should they win this game and Toronto... Back in the stadium. And the Yanks getting a rally going here in the bottom of the eighth. They pin it by two. 11 hits for the Yankees now. And a bullpen that... All has a sign rolls and they know what their job is. And Jeff Corborg uses it very well. Radinsky on to face Mel Hall, who is over three tonight. Oh, him up. Really good heads up play by Kelly. Did you see that? All right, that puts the potential tying winner. So I didn't think Conkerbites had a chance. You talk about recovering. Carco did not see the ball go up and made a good recovery. A great play by Carco Vice and a great play by Roberto Kelly. Good heads up base running. Well, that was. By Kelly and Greg Nettles, who I'm sure was yelling him back to first. Watch this slide. Very well played. Close up. White Sox will play their infield back. They certainly can give Ooh. up a run. Yeah. They could have loaded the bases. Yeah, that's always second guessing. That's the easiest thing to do. Strikeouts in those 51 innings. Mattingly at third. Kelly at second. And Kelly represents the tie and run. Ooh. Is, doesn't get his timing going. Scooter to me. And there's look a look at that. Oh, oh, he knew he had his yep, pitch. He liked the yep. cut. Doesn't seem to get things going quite early enough. And a good at bat in the fourth inning when he's single to right. Up and away. Try and make a pitch. And was that ball three on purpose? Or was it not? Uh -huh. I didn't think uh -huh. it was, but it could have been. Yes, it could. Base oh, right. Oh, ho. tie the ball game. Oh, oh, oh. Mattingly and Kelly score. is a clutch base hit. Something the Yankees were doing when they had that hot streak going was something they hadn't been doing in the last couple of weeks. Oh, man, and solidly hit, too. Clutch base hit by Hensley Mullen. Good two-strike base hit. Hmm. Left it right in the middle of the plate, didn't yes, he? Yes, he did. Boy, he got all the wood on that one. Well, that's a good piece of hitting. Didn't try to do too much with two strikes. No, didn't right. try to hit it 800 feet. He has the strength to do it. Now, that was good intelligent hitting by Mullen. So now a tie ball game. So I'm going to put this guy is throwing in case he gets up there. He's the hit. Base hit. No. Oh, he dropped the ball, called safe. A no-catch call by Jim Joyce. I thought that was a line. That could be trouble. Oh. Oh. That young man can play center field right there, Lance yeah. Johnson. That was not an easy play at all. The Yankees, two big runs. A big clutch base hit by Hensley Mullins. We go to the ninth. Tied here, five to five. afternoon bottom of the first Cubs up one to nothing when George Bell blooks the single to left field uh, Bruce Ruffin two score Cubs up three nothing next batter is Luis Salazar Ruffin still on 
And this one is deep with the three-run shot as 11th home run of the year. Cubs take a 6-0 lead in the first. Ruffin retires only one batter. Six consecutive hits to open the first. Rick Sutcliffe on his comeback and having a big day. Striking out Charlie Hayes. He went eight innings, allowing just one earned run. Nine Pitch, okay. Oh, take it, man. Two guns. And the shortstop calls. He's a captain of the infield. Good pitch. And the hitter way out front. And Espinosa says, I'll take it. And puts it away. So oh, it's one out. If he doesn't hit that, it's a base hit, Seba. Good play by the pitcher. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we go to the bottom of the ninth, the tie ball game 5-5. Five -five. Single here in the bottom of the ninth. And the second base hit of the evening for Pat Kelly. And he does nothing but represent the winning run. Good speed at first, good speed at the plate. And Bernie Williams will be the hitter. God Rodinsky came on in the eighth inning. And he got Mel Hall to pop to Ron Karkovice with Mattingly and Kelly on base. And yeah, then Hensley Mullins had a big single off the Chicago left-hander, and that's the story of the last part of this ball game. The Yankees playing bunt, certainly. And right through the first pitch, strike one. Buck Show. Williams with a couple of sacrifices on the season. One, th th one for three tonight. And he walked in the first. Yeah, I'll check the game for that's you. Right. That's why those things are done. Sure, base running, just not thinking. Oh. Oh, they go to second base. And yes, oh. they get him. It was I not thought they good. were not going to get him. Well, it wasn't a good slide by Kelly. Kelly slid and his body went around. Had he gone straight in, I think he would have beaten it. We get another look at that. you need any words here no. for the reasons why and where it has been a long day for Stump Merrill starting with Don Mattingly and meetings with executives and general managers and players and this is venting some of the frustration of the day Pat Kelly called out by Jim McKeon at second base Boy, he is really it's the, the most frustrated I've seen this stump I know all the things that have happened over the last few days but Ooh, boy. The umpire must know that it was a very close play. Let Stump uh, have a lot of rope there. Well, a lot of umpires will let the umpire, let the manager have his say. As long as he comes out, says it, and leaves, the Let's watch this slide. Won't argue. So he turns the body, and his leg didn't go in. He touched it with his hand. I think he stood to the base. I think no. he was trying to break up the double yeah. play. Did he get to the base? With, with his hand, but not the feet. If he had gone straight in with his feet, he would have been safe. Check it again. She's sliding by the bag with the feet. And he grabs the bag with his hand. Which gives the... You know, the people don't, don't realize that when you do that, you might as well put second base six feet farther yeah, away. that's right. Sure. See, he's making a motion. I'm trying to break up the double play. Forget the double play. That's right. Get the win and run. Get second base. It, there's no way they're going to double up Bernie Williams anyway. Uh-uh. You go to the bag. So another young mistake by the Yanks. Well, he certainly was there in time, oh, but he did not time. get to the bag. And don't forget, he didn't have to tag him. He just had to keep his foot on the base when he caught that ball, and he's forced. So a fielder's choice. Well, that is the advantage of the left-handed pitcher late in the ballgame. Mm -hmm. 1.30, it'll be Jeff Johnson against Greg Hibbert. And they pitch by the All right. <laughs> mm, that was the pitch of yeah, was it. <laughs> And time call by Ken Kaiser. 
Nine. It's a Ross, seven to ten. Oh. Up the middle base hit. Oh. And Williams stops at second. Guess who's coming up? And Don the Man. fans here oh. in the ballpark love it. Oh, yes. He's got a couple of hits tonight. Standing old for Don. My buddy Don Callaman, speaking of Don's 50 year reunion of the 838th Ordnance Depot, the Third Army from Pennsylvania. What do you say? Pig pen. Well, big Bobby pen. Pig pen. Big pen. You can call him Pig pen. No, no. They call him Pig. Do they? Sure. All right. Maybe they call him Thig. <laughs> Thig. Well, Jeff Torborg said, well, I'm going to go to my big guy in the bullpen, Thig pen with 30, 27 th saves, excuse me. We'll see if he throws it. And Radinsky nope. not very happy. You saw his frustration last inning after he gave up the base hit to Hensley Mullins. But Jeff Torbar going to his big guy in the bullpen. <laughs> ball game here on a beautiful night at the stadium. Tie ball game, first and second, one out, and number 23, the hitter. Well, he's got to have a lot of confidence in Big Ben, knowing that Mattingly, a left-hand batter, is coming up. Well, he certainly didn't like the way that Radinsky was throwing. Radinsky no. came in and gave up the single to Mullins, and then a single to Kelly. A fielder's choice on the attempted sacrifice, and another single by Sachs, and the ball being hit hard, so... Go with a guy that's done it with you before. Sometimes you say that take that righty lefty stuff and throw it right out yeah, the window. Right. You know, a pretty good matchup right here. <laughs> up and away, ball one. Mattingly struck out his first time up uh, against Wilson Alvarez and was robbed of a base hit in the third. That was again. Absolutely picked his pocket. And then two singles. The Yanks would like to have one more single here. Ooh. That's his biggest swing, I think, if yeah. I've ever seen Don Mattingly that's, take and he missed. That's right. It's good to see. He's got a couple of them in Yeah, it's nice to see on a day when it started with haircuts and meetings and press conferences. The game has overshadowed it all, no question about it. Hopped up to left field. And that'll curve back in the seats. It does. Somehow the game always seems to survive, Scooter, doesn't it? Yes, it does, over everything. It... Oh. You think Don Madden is... Thinking about his hair right now? No, no way. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I think anybody in this ballpark is. Nope. Other than you and me. <laughs> <laughs> Up and away, two and two. And you know that Stump's stomach has got to be going round and round and round. The Yankees have. Been able to win only two games from the White Sox all year out of nine. Guillen to Cora, they get one, and that's it. It looked like Maddeny trying to go to left center or in the hole between Guillen and Robin Ventura. And a good safe play by Ozzy Guillen. So the winning run now 90 feet away. And with two out, it'll be Roberto Kelly. <laughs> Kelly, home run in the fourth. He is 11th of the season. And Singleton scored in the eighth inning. 
swinging the bat very well, too. Well, the first one tonight, Steve, and we usually score a run when I give a birthday. Happy birthday, Christine Hayes, 23 years old, from Bergen Beach, Brooklyn. So might as well pack your bag. Hand me my briefcase over there. Steve. Okay. A little heavy. You got your money belt in there. I'm not going to lift that. You got your fan mail in there. <laughs> Strike one. And the old single will do it for the Yankees. Good pitch by Thickman. Mm -hmm. Boy, that Boy. fastball really ran in on those hands. Right in on him. Kelly has started the last five games since being activated from the disabled list back on the 13th of the month. Well, they got the outfield playing deep, you know it. Maddenly goes to second, uncontested. Deep, Dave. Usually, with the uh, winning run on, they come in a little bit. A little bit to defend the base hit that right. falls in front. Yes. More balls will fall in front of you, right? Down to third. Oh, they might get it first. Speed up. Hey, yes, yes, well. How do you like that? I told you, a little one birthday. A uh, hesitation there at third base by Robin Ventura, base hit by Roberto Kelly. And a winning run here in the bottom of the ninth inning, and you can't write a better script than that. <laughs> Everything else is forgotten. Had a little fun. Forget the haircuts, forget yeah. everything else, forget the words that are said. There is nothing that takes that taste out of the mouth that has soured around here all day. <laughs> and some smiles on some players' faces, and that is nice to see. Robin Ventura hesitated, actually was trying to go to second base. Nobody covering. That's right, that was strange right there. Nobody covering. They were playing deep on Roberto Kelly in the outfield and the infield. And Cora did not cover at second base. And Kelly hustling all the way. Infield base hit for Roberto. His third hit of the evening. You can see Ooh. Ventura said, well, we're going to go the short way, but nobody, nobody home at second base. Nobody even got close Not to it. Not even close. <laughs> Cora never even made a move over there. And Roberto, good hustle, said, but hey, let's win this one. <laughs> Wrap it up for the Yankees. Head for the clubhouse. The bus leaves in 45 minutes. <laughs> A big cover behind win for the Yankees here tonight. Six to five for the Yankees. Boy, and a 15 tough. 15 base hits tonight. Tough Put loss for the White Sox. Yeah, very tough. Look at Mattingly. <laughs> All right. The hair man, yep. A long day. Let's wrap it up with a victory. Oh. The Yanks six runs on 15 hits. The White Sox five runs on 10 hits. They made a couple of errors. And they made about four mental errors in the ball game, Scooter. I know it. <laughs> I know it. Uh, two in a row for the Yanks. 6-5 victory over the 